Hi everybody, my name's Ollie. I'm a junior doctor based in the UK and today I'm really excited to be launching a new series of videos here on the channel which is Medical Emergencies Made Easy. Now this series is primarily focused at medical students and PA students who will have their finals approaching this year. Now I need to make it really clear right from the offset, these videos are intended for educational purposes only. They are not to be used to guide your clinical practice and they absolutely should not be used by members of the public to guide their decision making in an emergency. These videos are made for students to help you pass your exams. That is it. But with that out of the way, this series, as with all of my medical education content, will come with a fact sheet, almost like a tutorial summary, and a set of flashcards designed to support this session, which you can access for free by filling out the feedback form, which will be linked in the description below. So if you want to add these cards to your own study resources, all you have to do is fill out that feedback form and all of it will be readily accessible for you. But let's jump into the first video in this series, which is anaphylaxis. So what is anaphylaxis? Well, it falls under the umbrella term of acute hypersensitivity reactions and is an extreme form of an allergic reaction. It can be fatal very, very quickly, which means that if we're on the wards, it needs to be something that we're able to spot and do something about very quickly. So let's start by briefly talking about the underlying pathophysiology, what causes anaphylactic reactions to actually happen. Well, most anaphylactic reactions are mediated by IgE, immunoglobulin type E, which you'll recall from your studies is the immunoglobulin responsible for type one hypersensitivity reactions. These reactions usually consist of an acute and then a delayed phase, so we get a biphasic response characteristically. And what essentially happens during the acute phase is that our mast cells degranulate, releasing a series of highly vasoactive amines and inflammatory lipid mediators. And this fundamentally leads to two key processes that causes problems. The first major issue is due to vasodilation and increased vascular permeability, which leads to two further problems. So not only does our patient's blood pressure drop down into their boots, but because of the extra visation, they are receiving reduced blood flow back to the heart, which means that these patients have a combination of hypovolemic and distributive shock. So not only is their blood not where it's supposed to be, the volume is moving into the extravascular spaces, it's not being recirculated properly either. And the second key problem is smooth muscle spasm. Because smooth muscle is effectively what controls the diameter of our upper airways in the bronchial tree, it's easy to understand when the smooth muscle goes into spasm, the bronchial tree starts to close off and shrink down, and this is what leaves people struggling to breathe and ultimately they will asphyxiate. It makes sense then understanding the pathophysiology, why we see the common signs and symptoms that we do. The most common signs and symptoms for anaphylaxis are loss of consciousness, upper airway obstruction following swelling of the tongue and oropharynx, and you may see some skin changes as well, including flushing, urticaria or hives as it's commonly known, as well as changes in colour owing to cyanosis of the lips and tongue. So let's take a look now at a typical question stem for an anaphylaxis scenario. You are a first year foundation doctor working on the infectious diseases ward. Peter Smith, a 35 year old male, has come onto the ward to receive treatment for bacterial endocarditis and following your trust's antimicrobial guidelines, you prescribe him IV benzyl penicillin 1.2 grams every four hours. Shortly after the first dose is given, Peter develops some shortness of breath and says he feels extremely unwell. The nurse looking after him calls you to come and review. So let's start simply, we're going to see an acutely unwell patient, so we need to utilize our A to E approach. We go to assess the airway. Mr. Smith, can you hear me? Peter is able to speak to you, but he is clearly struggling to do so. We'll keep speaking to Peter throughout to ensure that his airway remains patent. When we go to assess Peter's breathing, he has a respiratory rate of 25 breaths per minute, increased work of breathing, and he is obviously rapidly becoming fatigued. His O2 saturations read 93% on air. So we'll use our stethoscope to listen to Peter's chest, trying to hear any additional sounds, apply some oxygen monitoring and give him 15 litres of high flow oxygen through a non-rebreathe mask. Then we move to C for circulation. His heart rate is 120 beats per minute. He has a capillary refill time of four seconds, blood pressure of 95 over 54, 
and he looks pale and feels cool and clammy to the touch. You ask one of your nursing colleagues nearby to put in two wide bore 18 gauge cannulae, one in each arm. We move on to D for disability. Peter at the moment is fully alert, has a temperature of 37.2 degrees Celsius, pupils are equal and responsive to light, and his most recent blood glucose measurement was 6.8. And lastly, we completely expose Peter, who has an urticarial rash visible on his chest and trunk, and his lips and tongue look noticeably swollen. We have airway, breathing and circulation symptoms along with changes in the skin in the form of an urticarial rash. So we are going to very promptly begin our anaphylaxis treatment algorithm. So the very first thing that needs to happen is that we need to call for help, whether that is you or someone who is with you. That means pulling the emergency buzzer, shouting for help, making sure that a crash call is put out. In the UK, we will often dial for twos. Two really important things to specify. The first, that you need airway support. Our patient may need to be intubated as the airway closes off. And two, they need to know exactly where you are because this situation is incredibly time sensitive. The second step in our treatment pathway is to remove any obvious source of a trigger. In this case, we have reason to think it's likely to be the benzyl penicillin infusion. So you can either stop that, pull the cannula out, whichever is gonna be quickest. Step three is to lie the patient flat and if possible, elevate their legs. Many hospital beds do have an emergency flatten the bed button because we're trying to return blood to the core to improve circulation. Step four is the really, really important drug to remember for anaphylaxis. 500 micrograms of intramuscular adrenaline. The most up-to-date resus guidelines recommend giving this dose into the anterolateral aspect of the middle one-third of the thigh. Most trusts will have this pre-dosed in the crash trolley. Remember there are different doses for adults and children, but for adults the standard dose is 500 micrograms of one in a thousand concentration adrenaline. Step five is to reassess. Once the adrenaline has been given, is the airway still patent? Is there any immediate response? Step six, if they are not already on oxygen, remember that they need to be on 15 litres high flow oxygen via a non-rebreathe mask. We're trying to maintain their saturations above 94%. Step number seven, get all our relevant monitoring in place. We need a cardiac monitor in case they go into cardiac arrest. We should be monitoring their blood pressure and their oxygen saturations. Step number eight, reassess after five minutes. If there is no significant response after five minutes, they need a second dose of adrenaline, 500 micrograms intramuscularly and an IV fluid challenge. That is going to be 500 millilitres or a litre of a crystalloid such as Hartmann's solution IV given over 15 minutes in an attempt to maintain that blood pressure. And that is the main anaphylaxis primary treatment algorithm. There are other drugs to consider which previously formed part of the acute management guidelines. They no longer do. Certainly I was taught these additional drugs in medical school, but the really key thing is that thinking about other treatments should not delay the adrenaline being given. If you're gonna do one thing, give them the adrenaline. So two other drugs that you may wish to consider are a 200 milligram IM dose of hydrocortisone to prevent that second delayed reaction, as well as a dose of a non-sedating antihistamine such as 10 milligrams of cetirizine intravenously to help deal with the urticarial skin reactions. But neither of those things are as important as getting that adrenaline in. That's the acute treatment out of the way. For follow-up, think about things like observing for at least six hours in case we get the delayed part of the biphasic response, really good safety netting advice, sending them home with an EpiPen, as well as referring to an allergy service, especially if it's not clear what actually caused the reaction. And the last little fact that might be useful to remember for exams is that the most common causes of anaphylactic reactions in young people is food, classically things like nuts, shellfish and eggs, whereas in older people and adults the most common cause of an anaphylactic reaction is exposure to penicillins in a previously undocumented allergic reaction. So that brings us to the end of this video guys, thank you so much for watching as always. I'd really appreciate if you find this video useful I'd really appreciate if you found this video useful, you could fill out the feedback form that is linked in the video description. And if you do that, you'll get access to a full tutorial summary sheet and a set of flashcards that you can use to take this information forward and practice it on the wards. 
Please be sure to let me know if there are other topics that you would like to see and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and go and visit my website ollieburton.com where you can find a full index of all my videos and learning resources. Thanks guys, take care and I will see you next time.